I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, oh, I'm just not creative. I suck at drawing. Ah. Please believe me when I say that your ability to draw has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with how creative you are. Hello, I'm Jenny. I'm a creativity researcher and a coach, and this is Reclaiming Creativity, where we explore what it means to live a creative life because life with creativity is better than life without it. The common misconception that creativity equals art is called art bias. Today, I thought we could talk about where art bias comes from, why it's harmful, why it's wrong, and what we can replace it with. I've got a lot to say and you don't have all day, so let's dive in. Art bias is defined as the tendency to overestimate the association between creativity and art. It seems pretty clear to me that art bias, at least in part, comes from how we teach creativity in schools. For the most part, creativity is confined to art class. Kids practicing their creativity is messy and inconvenient. Conventionality and compliance are so much easier to manage. So we shove creativity to the side and in so many ways we say, save it for art class. So we grow up with this art bias, but so what? It means that only individuals with exceptional artistic talent can be labeled creative. So if I'm not amazing at drawing people in art class, then all of a sudden I'm not creative. And if I now tell myself I'm not a creative person, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I start to opt out of creative activities and slowly but surely my creative muscle starts to atrophy. And this is tragic. The truth is there's no such thing as creative people and uncreative people. They're simply people who use their creativity and people who don't. Okay, so we know where our bias comes from, we know that it's harmful, but you may be wondering, is it really wrong? Yes, yes it is. Art bias is wrong for two main reasons. First, art is not necessarily creative. And second, creativity is so much more than just art. Let's start by getting grounded in the definition of creativity. There are many definitions of creativity floating around, but most people who study creativity agree that the essence of creativity, its DNA, if you will, involves two criteria. Creativity is essentially coming up with something, an idea, an artwork, etc., that is both novel, also called original, unique, surprising, and valuable, also called useful, meaningful, or appropriate. So from this lens, is art automatically creative? Is it automatically novel and valuable? I feel very strongly that the answer is no. Let me give you a few examples. Let's start with the story of Dafen. Dafen is a village in mainland China, just across the border from Hong Kong. At one point, this village produced an estimated 60% of the world's oil paintings. They use an industrial assembly line process to reproduce famous artworks. Each worker would focus only on a part of the painting. One might do the trees, another the clouds, and then hand it off to the next person. Objectively, these workers are producing art. I don't know what else you would call it. But copying someone else's painting isn't creative. It fails to meet the first criteria of novelty. But you don't have to be in an assembly line to feel that way. Last year, I signed up for an art workshop at my university. The facilitator talked a bit about Cezanne's life and work, and she had printed out a bunch of pictures of Cezanne's artwork. She told us to choose one and try to reproduce it. While it was a relaxing activity and something nice to do with friends, I can't say that I felt like I was flexing my creativity. I mean, copying is kind of the opposite of creativity. Now, it's true that copying does have its place in the creative process. Picasso spent much of his time at art school learning how to copy the masters. And no matter what your creative discipline, trying to copy works that you love can be a valuable way to improve your technique. For instance, I heard an aspiring screenwriter say that he learned a ton by reverse engineering the screenplay to one of his favorite films. And yet, that is not the same thing as being creative. Does that make sense? Another example. If visual arts are the first thing that come to mind when we think of creativity, music is probably the second. Ellen Langer, a psychology professor at Harvard, studies mindfulness. Not mindfulness meditation, but mindfulness as the opposite to mindlessness, so as in doing things mindfully. She did this really interesting study with musicians from a prestigious symphony orchestra. From the outside, it certainly looks like a creative career. I mean, getting paid to play music every day. But she quotes a retired musician from an elite orchestra who said, to the outsider, it may look like a glamorous job, but it's not. It's a factory job with a little bit of art thrown in. In fact, her research found that many orchestra musicians are actually very bored because they end up playing the same piece of music over and over and over again. So while I'll grant you that most artistic endeavors are in fact creative, I hope I've convinced you that art isn't necessarily automatically creative. But that's only half of my argument. 
Next, I need to convince you that creativity is so much more than just making art. Creativity is also central to science. Science is the process of creating new knowledge. In order to get an article published in an academic journal, you need to prove that your findings represent a novel and useful contribution to the field. Think about some of the most amazing advances in science. Marie Curie discovered two new elements and made major advancements in x-ray technology. Jane Goodall took a completely unique approach to studying chimpanzees and caused us to have to reevaluate the very definition of what it means to be human. Ada Lovelace pioneered the field of computer programming in the early 1800s. These scientists had to bring a unique perspective. They had to envision possibilities that others couldn't yet see, and they displayed extraordinary creativity. Creativity is also essential to business and innovation. Every entrepreneur who disrupts an industry is demonstrating incredible creativity. You have to come up with a creative new idea for a business, and then keep coming up with creative solutions to problem after problem after problem that pop up in your way. You have to keep innovating, continue to come up with fresh ideas for providing value, if you want to survive and thrive as a business. So creativity is essential to science and business. But the truth is that creativity isn't what you do, it's how you do it. And you can do anything in a creative way. Don't believe me? Let's do a rapid fire round. Take travel. You could go on a packaged cruise vacation in a very controlled, predictable environment, or you could take a creative approach to travel. You could book a one-way ticket with nothing but your backpack and your thirst for adventure. Take teaching. Sure, you could just read out your lecture notes, or even worse, read aloud from the textbook. Unfortunately, I had a teacher in high school who did that. Or you could completely improvise your teaching based on the needs and interests of your students. Take cooking. You could follow the recipe religiously, or you could design your own recipe. Take careers. You could follow some well-established conventional career path, or you could take a creative approach, design your own job description, and piece together a portfolio career. I could go on, but you get the idea. I'm curious. In what other ways do you bring a creative approach to aspects of your life? Let me know in the comments below. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, you might also enjoy my next video about the five levels of creativity. Thanks for watching, and until next time, may your creativity continue to surprise you.